So we're here with Robert Scobo. Um, I don't know, that, what's the best way to describe, you describe yourself because you're so, you have so many different hats. Uh, lately I've been mostly a futurist. I go around the world and interview tech executives and innovators, mostly at startups, because that's usually who's changing the future. Yeah. And uh, put, uh, do it like what you're doing here and put them up on YouTube or uh, Facebook. Yeah. And what, we'll just jump straight in, like what's the most exciting thing you've seen? Like what's really... <sighs> We're you know, in other than swarms of robots, <laughs> <laughs> the, the thousand, thousand little robots. I mean, there's lots of fun stuff like that. But mo let's be honest, most people won't even touch a swarm of robots like that. They're they're little tiny robots that swarm together. Um, you know, there's stuff that the R and D labs do that are really cool and crazy. And you know, self-driving cars like yeah. that, right? Uh, most humans are not going to have a self-driving car for 20, 30, 40 years. You know, and. Is that what people in Silicon Valley are most excited about, or like where, where yeah, are the? Where I, the I mean, if you went, well, there's uh, the, there's a lot of ways to answer that question because there's uh, what six million people who live within an hour yeah. of me, right? And uh, some of them are researchers down at at, at uh, uh, Stanford Linear Accelerator doing uh, X-ray research. You know, what they're excited about is very different than yeah, what yeah. I'm excited about, and they're. There's a whole uh, pharma community here that's doing uh, drug drug uh, development. Uh, uh, generally, I'm more c connected with the consumer internet companies, you know, Facebook, Twitter, yeah. LinkedIn, and that kind of thing, Google, um, and sure. all the startups that are uh, feeding the ecosystem. So, uh, mobile is still the number one. one. Uh, if you look at the, some of the trends that are springing off of mobile, right? You, you have the connected home or the automatic home. So my home now has a drop cam in it and has a, a, a Nest thermostat and a smoke detector. Uh, I have uh, uh, Sonos and yeah. uh, some other audio gear uh, so I can play I off the, of my mobile phone. Touches a lot on that. Yeah, yeah, I wrote a book called Age of Context, which is all on uh, this new future of sensors and mobile connectedness. When you get in the car now, you can. There's a whole bunch of startups that are dealing with the car. There's a whole bunch of startups that are dealing with things you wear on your wrist or on your body, and uh, that's. And so you famously wore Google Glass and got quite a bit of abuse or in the shower. Yeah, yeah. So that, that was quite a big story. <laughs> You're obviously not worried about privacy, or you you have control. Well, I am worried about privacy because uh, I'm not going to give you my passwords to my Gmail or my bank account, particularly not that there's anything in there right now. But uh, you know, I'm not going to give you those. And I'm not going to give you uh, uh, a lot of uh, data that comes connected with that kind of stuff, right? Well, let's just play devil's advocate. So your your house temperature is controlled, your music is in there. Yeah. Google are gonna own a lot of that data and already do. Go they already do because they own Dropcam and they own Nest. Yeah. So there's three sensors I walk by that Google owns every day when I walk in my house, right? The Dropcam knows I'm home because it shows on my mobile phone every time I walk yeah. by that that camera, right? So, so, and even in the last few days I was reading about maps tracking you everywhere even if you're, if you're oh not online. <laughs> oh, we're gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it only takes maybe one person to go rogue in those companies. No, you're, you're confident. I, all well, I'm not confident with anything, but all technology has a good and a bad. Yeah. Uh, automobiles when when they were developed a hundred years ago, people were freaking out about yeah. those too. And what they should have been talking about is, hey, you know, these things are going to kill 30,000 people yeah, a year. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and, and yet we drive every day yeah. because there's utility for the risk of driving. Yeah. And so I know that people are going to go into this new world. They're going to scream and yell and, and yeah, have yeah. a but lot it's of... Happen. It's it already is happening. Yeah, yeah. It already what is about happening the, because there's deep utility. The, the Nest thermostat saves me money. Yeah. So if you don't like saving money, keep worried about your privacy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Because it knows when I'm home, yeah. and and it knows the pattern of me being home. So it turns off the thermostat when I'm not home, and it saves me money. So if you don't like saving money, keep being freaked out about your privacy. Right? <laughs> I just had the founder of Human in here before, right? Which is a new mobile app yeah. that helps us share contact information and all sorts of details about ourselves. Well, you might want to know that before you interview somebody, right? <laughs> True, true. Oh my God, is. our privacy is going to be uh, eroded. I got to um, put on my tinfoil hat here. <laughs> <laughs> so in terms of, let's just, so this is obviously, we're talking to a more mainstream audience here. So yeah. 
the big companies that people think about are over Google. here: Apple, Google, Facebook, yeah. Twitter. Uh, who's they're all just getting so big and acqui hiring all these smaller companies. Who's really like? I have a lot of time for Facebook. I think they're what they're doing is really innovative. I think Facebook is running away with the social game. The feed is dramatically better, and the 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 reason it is is they've uh, one they know our social graph. Yeah. They know our connection to friends and yeah. people in our family and people at work. So you having a good argument about news coming through the feeds on either Twitter or you were saying it's better it, on Facebook. If you're careful about what you click like on yeah. and you're careful about who you friend, the feed gets better and better. If you're not careful and you click, yeah. if you keep clicking on those Kardashian videos, you're going to see more Kardashian videos yeah, and that yeah. might make you stupider. <laughs> I just pissed off about a billion people. <laughs> people do get wind up about it. And what about like Twitter? But, but this is how Facebook works, right? If you click like on only Ted videos, you'll see Ted videos. videos. Yeah. If you click so like on my videos, the, thank you very much, <laughs> then you'll see more of my videos. So right? how do you get the good stuff? At, like if I, let's say I'm not smart enough to follow Ted or TechCrunch like how do I get that into my Facebook feed? Your friends. Okay. It, hopefully you have some smart friends, you know? Who push it into well, your feed? Well, every time they click like on it, once in a while one of those things will show up on my feed and yeah. says, uh, you know, Joe Smith liked this uh, Ted video. Yeah. Ah, what's this Ted video? <laughs> it's not the Kardashians anymore. <laughs> and sometimes, and that's how the news gets into your feed, right? Okay. And also, uh, Facebook randomly puts some stuff in there just, just to, like, to test you yeah. and see, hey, are you still there? <laughs> so I don't know if you saw, a few days ago, Twitter started testing the, where if you favorite a tweet yeah. and pushes into it. So that's, yeah. they're, they're kind of... You know why? Because Twitter has an onboarding problem. Uh, for me, I know how to do Twitter. Yeah. And I have 40,000 people on, that I've hand so, followed. Yeah. I know who is it, who runs the tech industry and I've followed them yeah. all. And that therefore, my Twitter feed is... Pretty nice. Yeah. It is very noisy compared to Facebook, but it's pretty nice. Yeah. But most people who come in, you know, they see, uh, like yesterday I was at an amusement park and it says, follow us on Twitter. Yeah. Oh, you know, if you just uh, landed from Mars today and, you, and that's your first sign you see, you might go, what is this Twitter yeah. thing? Oh, I'll download Twitter, I'll get on Twitter, I'll follow this amusement park. Well, that's a stupid thing to yeah. follow. <laughs> right? So uh, you start following a few people, but you don't notice that there's uh, thousands of journalists on yeah, Twitter, yeah. and there's uh, thousands of celebrities, and there's thousands of interesting people in the world, right? They should try and like, I'd, off, I'd, I'd love to see, I, I'm used to my own, and I'm the same, I follow journalists and all that stuff, but I'd love to see, like I'd love to look at your feed for for one day and experience, see the information that I'm getting, because yeah. like, it's so oh, different let's for pull all it up. the different... It's so always fun. I, you know, the other day I was sitting out on the cliff and, and somebody was like, oh, show me your feed because I want to see what it does. But he, here we go. It is work though. Like you do have to put work in to get Oh, I put like thousands that. of hours yeah. into, into Facebook, mostly because I, I, I'm interested in the tech industry. Yeah. So I've friended, you know, uh, people like Dave Weiner's on my feed right now. Well, let's, let's just go to the top. So, um, so you are you, you know, actually get so say first. Here's an ad that Esther Schindler liked. Okay, there's some happy birthdays. Fred Davis, uh, writing about Geekdom San Francisco. Now yeah. this is the second time in a row I've done this, where it shows something about where I am. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, turning yeah. contextual. Yeah, yeah. Because Geekdom is right outside this door, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Fred Davis is probably sitting 20 Somewhere yards there, from me. Yeah. And he's uh, and you think also the co-founder of, he's the guy who started Wired Magazine. So I'm very interested so in it. You think now look at the or... second thing. Mandy Grignan, and hus her husband is my best friend. Okay. So I might be interested yeah, in that. Yeah, yeah. It's, no, it's learning all sorts of weird it shit is. about us, right? And then Tina is talking about the Gilmore Gang that I was on, okay. Dave Weiner is uh, in New York, but uh, he's a, a great friend and he writes about software and I like his stuff a lot. Scott Jordan is CEO of uh, Scott E. Best who makes my clothes. So it's, it's, it's Can you see a pattern yeah, here? Yeah, 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 this yeah. is uh, very yeah, contextual, start. very focused on who I am because I've given it so much signal. Yeah. It is crazy how good a quality. And now we're into the tech news. Pando Daily. You know, Chris Hewer liked uh, a, a thing about his new uh, his new company, so I'm going to like that. Very and I'm good. probably going to follow Al Lind. I think I already did that. So, you know, 
So, and Francisco Dow, we were drinking on Friday. The San Jose Mercury News is showing me news for my community. Here we had uh, Scott Jordan again. Here we have breaking, breaking news. Um, here, David Sobeski works at Disney, is writing about the tech industry. He's already, always very good. Uh, boing Boing. I mean, you can see the quality of this feed is just crazy so good. The one thing I'd say to you, right? So, like that, I, I, I totally get that, and that's brilliant. The two apps that interest me the most and that, that are, yeah. I think that it's sort of because they're so private is WhatsApp. I don't know if you use WhatsApp. I, I do, but I, it is so spammy for me. It's useless because really? my email and phone You're numbers are public. Okay, okay. Okay. And so I get nothing but spam on those things, so I can't use them. I use m Messenger instead. A messenger is far yeah. better for me, and it doesn't have spam because Facebook protected us from spam. It does. That's and true. What I like about Snapchat, though, is like, if I post something, like I'll just show you here. Like, well, Snapchat's different than WhatsApp, because yeah. Snapchat does have a use. It does. And if I and I'll, I'll see if you nailed the use of it. Well, what I like about it is like I fo so look, we just posted I just posted a video at Stanford yeah. yesterday, but that's seen by 178 people. Yeah. So that's seen by everybody in my social circle. Whereas yeah. Facebook chooses yeah. who gets to see. So it's but you know why Facebook chooses? Because uh, we are actually really bad at generating content. Uh, I've I, in the past month I've looked at 5,000 Facebook profiles. Yeah. And it is full of the worst crap I imaginable. Yeah. I'm sorry you guys are really bad at this. Yeah. When you take a picture of your kids, it's not well exposed, it's not framed right, it's not nice, it's yeah. not emotional, you're not Trey Ratcliffe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'd rather see a picture from Trey Ratcliffe because yeah. he uh, actually does a really wonderful, beautiful fo photos, right? Yeah. And you saw how good Facebook yeah, is yeah, yeah, at yeah. bringing me interesting the stuff. stuff yeah. It gets rid of all the crap. I think Zuckerberg's so, worried about Snapchat though. He's worried about Snapchat for a different reason. What's that? Snapchat uh, was developed because the kids realize there's consequences to even clicking like on somebody. Yeah. Right? If you click like on the wrong girl's uh, picture, yeah. then yeah. the other girls are getting, going, hey, well, what, what about me? And yeah, why yeah, didn't yeah. you like my picture? Yeah, yeah. And that just there causes enough drama to make you go, ah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And Snapchat, the picture goes away yeah. after 30 seconds, yeah. right? Or, they've uh, tried a couple of times to clone it and buy it. Oh, there's lots of competitors to Snapchat. Yeah. Actually, there's a new one called Confide, right. which actually you, you actually have to put your finger over the message okay. to see it. Okay. So uh, even taking video of it is hard. You know? um, that kind of brings us on to a different topic. So we're in yeah. Silicon Valley, which is the, the, the heart of it. A few of these companies, so uh, Snapchat, Tinder, uh, are, are starting to come out of LA. Yeah. Why is that now? Like, what's what's changed? Because of the celebrity factor. Uh, I have a niece. And she's uh, 21 years old. 20, yeah, 22 now. And uh, when I told her, oh, I'm having lunch with Mark Zuckerberg, she's like, doesn't care. Doesn't care. Yeah. When I tell her I'm having lunch with uh, Ashton Kutcher, yeah. oh my God, I got it! <laughs> I want to come along. Can yeah, I come yeah. along? <laughs> no, you can't come along. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the celebrity part. has a pull on average people, and if you're yeah. trying to build a company, uh, particularly a social company that is going to talk about music or uh, do these social yeah, things yeah. with kids, celebrity matters a huge deal. Ashton Kutcher and, was a good to pick up on that early. Like he, oh yeah. He, well, he, he knew that he needed to convert his celebrity into uh, uh, another business. Yeah. So he started investing in the tech industry, yeah. and he invested in Flipboard and Airbnb. Like and I remember, he was in, remember when he did the race to a million followers, or like that. I mean, yeah, like, yeah. like six years ago or something. Yeah, he's very smart. I, yeah. uh, in fact, uh, my wife and I went when we had lunch with him. Go, man, he's nothing like he plays on TV because yeah, yeah, he yeah, plays yeah. this dumb uh, teenager yeah, who's yeah. like, uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you better watch out for the the guys who play dumb. <laughs> <laughs> what about um, Google Glass? Uh, I I got a pair, used them for a couple of days. Yeah, I use them for almost a year. <laughs> yeah. Have Google I, even given up on them? Yeah, so, somewhat. Although they're going to come out with a new version uh, next year, from what I hear. The um, 
I believe strongly in on-the-face wearables. I, I think for uh, some uses, like uh, filming uh, you skiing, yeah, it makes yeah. a huge amount of sense, right? Yeah. And GoPro is going after that on the yeah, on yeah, a helmet, yeah, yeah. camera view, yeah. or face view. You see it a lot of cam uh, comp yeah. concerts. We've got a stick we're filming. Yeah, yeah. yeah when, I, when I went to Coachella, everybody has yeah, the GoPro yeah, yeah, up yeah. on the stick and is uh, yeah, yeah. With, you know recording everything. Everybody's yeah. smoking dope. Nobody yeah. cares about yeah, being yeah, recorded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. So it's not the it's recording, just, although uh, a lot of people keyed in on that. They keyed in on that it made them feel uncomfortable and they blamed it on the camera. Yeah. They blamed it on the wrong thing. With, with this, if I pull out my phone right now and I start doing this, you can sort of see um, uh, what I'm doing. Yeah. And you can see uh, that I'm on Facebook or Twitter, right? Yeah. And you can say something like, hey, isn't Facebook uh, not as important as this interview right yeah, now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if I was doing the same thing on glass, you can't see what I'm doing. Am I recording you? Yeah, yeah. Am I playing with Twitter? Am I looking at some porn? You yeah, have no yeah, idea. Yeah. You know the light's on and you yeah. know I'm paying attention to it. It changed our social contract with each other, yeah. which has evolved over millions of years because we learn to look into p each other's eyes to judge whether you're a, a, a trustworthy person yeah. or not, right? And this messes with that social contract. So here's the problem. You can't put them away because they're not foldable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When they're foldable, I think they're going to come back. Right. They are. Uh, there's a couple companies out here in Geekdom that are making uh, making them for vertical markets like uh, surgeons yeah. and cops and stuff like that. That yeah. I I, I, I think that'll yeah. be a big uh, market for these guys, yeah. not for Google. G Google wants everybody to work. Yeah. Right. And, uh, and if, just on Google because they're such a big company and they're they're everywhere. Like it feels like they've had this series of. Close misses Google Plus glasses, all that sort of it's, stuff. Like, when did they come out with their next? Like, obviously YouTube is big and stuff. It's like that, really, right? it's really hard. I worked at Microsoft, yeah. and Google is going through a, a lot of the same kinds of problems. It's really hard to build a new thing inside a big company. Yeah. Even at Facebook, if Facebook didn't get Snapchat, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They could have. Yeah. You know, but. Uh, if Even you, if you go, X and trying to spin it out, and it, it's really hard to nail a new thing. And then if you're behind and you're having to chase a competitor uh, at Rackspace, we're having to yeah. chase Amazon. Yeah, it is really hard to chase a competitor yeah. and uh, catch up. And uh, a lot of times, uh, you uh, start trying to make shortcuts yeah. to catch up. Google Plus is a great example of this. They start suggesting people to me who have never posted. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if they had been the first ones to do this, they would never have done that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they know that the community that's already on on this thing is what really matters, yeah. not the other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. Know? yeah. Build it out from there. Yeah. And it's really tough to do that in a big company yeah. because yeah. there's committees that are arguing about this stuff. Yeah. And, and like, let's say. Uh, Let's say we were all a committee and having to decide where to go to lunch. And yeah. let's say you have a Stanford shirt on. Let's say you're a PhD student yeah. at Stanford and I'm a PhD student at Car Cornell. Yeah. We uh, kicked your ass in the self-driving car and you want to go to Thai or something like that? Yeah, 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 yeah. I hate Thai. We're not going there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then uh, he kicks in and he goes, I hate uh, Vietnamese food, yeah. which I might say, uh, and yeah. I hate Thai. And I went to Waterloo and I have a PhD yeah. in wearable computers. And so blah, it's easier blah, blah. to come from a startup. Yeah, because uh, one kid sees a new thing and starts just building it for himself from Apple on up, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Steve Wozniak told me all I wanted was a personal computer, and my boss at HP and Atari didn't think anybody would buy one, so yeah, they didn't. Yeah, yeah. He, he he tried to get HP to build they it. Wouldn't do it because they um, can't see a market that doesn't exist. So, just to sort of finish up, so we're we're making this documentary, and it's about a book and and. Yeah. I, I thought it was interesting to write a book because it's, d will people still buy this physical thing? And I think they will. It turns out we sold 26, 27,000 of these so awesome. far. A third were paper, yeah. like this. A Amazon actually prints it, so yeah. Yeah, please do buy my book. <laughs> uh, a third are on Kindle, yeah. uh, so you can uh, read that on your phone or on your tablet or on your desktop PC. 
and a third are on Audible, which Amazon also owns. Yeah, yeah. And that's because people are on the subway Listen or on it. their car and in their car commuting an hour every day and they're listening to books. And how would you, in terms of marketing, so like if we were trying to get the message out, that's kind of what we're saying, like would you use social, obviously, do, it does tradition does going on a TV show work? Does mm-hmm. should you be standing in the street? Should you get conferences? It all works. Yeah. Just it all works. It. <laughs> <laughs> try it all. Yeah, I mean yeah, that yeah. Uh, try it all. The f- one thing I, I keyed in on, because I wrote another book with yeah, Shell yeah. before this called Naked Conversations, and we had uh, Wiley publish that book. Yeah. And back then there really wasn't Amazon. Uh, everybody yeah. bought books at a bookseller, yeah. you know, like Barnes & Noble yeah. or uh, their local They're bookstore. Screwed, man. I started, this time I asked my audiences when I speak, where do you guys buy books? Uh, how many people have bought a book in the last month? Okay, keep your hands up if you did not buy that book on Amazon. Yeah. Not a single hand went down. Yeah. So I said, okay, nobody is buying books on uh, that I care about. Yeah. I, I don't care about the grandma in, in yeah, yeah, Russia. Yeah, 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 yeah. I care about the tech industry. Nobody is buying books except on Amazon. Yeah. So let's just make a deal with Amazon. Yeah. And that, so they made my book. But to get on Amazon, when you see a grid of books, yeah. Uh, there's a few numbers on that grid. Yeah, yeah, One yeah. that you have to see a great cover, so we, we yeah. spent a little bit of money on a red cover so it would stand Still out in the chance. grid. Number two, uh, they show how many reviews does this book have. Yeah. So you better have a, at least 100 review, yeah. reviews. If you only have one review, everybody's like, oh, that book's not serious, I'm yeah. going in the next one, yeah. right? If you only have, uh, can only read one book a month, uh, you're gonna look at your. Uh, yeah, yeah. You're gonna go tech books or business books, yeah. and you're gonna see a grid, and you're gonna go, okay, who has a lot of a lot of reviews, and then how good were the reviews? So our reviews are, we have 300 plus reviews, and we have uh, 4.8 stars. Yeah, and that's why it sells. Yeah, yeah. The book industry is not really good at getting those reviews. No. I had to send out 800 copies for free in PDF form before the book shipped. Yeah, and said, please, please read this. Say anything you want about it on Amazon. I don't care if you say it's a one star, it's a Just shitty, review. but please, please review it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and because uh, it's so important to have those reviews on Amazon, because that's what makes your book look credible, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and and that's actually how we're all being rated. Did you know on Gmail we're being rated by how well we are at at putting things in the spam folder? Really? You don't know this because there's yeah, not a number yeah, you can yeah, see, yeah. but we each have a number. And we each are being tracked by Gmail on how well we are at putting things in the and spam they folder. Take the data and make the well, no, better. they give you they give you more power okay. if you're better at it. Because <laughs> I can put something in the spam folder, and it probably goes in everybody's spam folder, right? That's because I'm really careful with it, and I'm really uh, diligent with it. And if I see something in spam that's not spam, I pull it out. Yeah, yeah. When I ride in Uber the Uber driver is rating us as well. Yeah. So if I wreck the car, if I get sick uh, and barf in the car and cause that driver a lot of pain to clean up the car, up. He, he gives me a one-star review and says, this customer was really a nasty customer. Is there anything on that? So I, do, I don't know if you remember, there's one called Empire Avenue. Where yeah, yeah, yeah. have like a rating. I'm still there, but I, I... There's obviously Cloud and there was another one, but like, could you see system whereby you had like a Robert Scoble score for ever for like it's your Uber, it's your Gmail score. Like I know that's what cloud was, but we we are uh, each system is being is tracking us this way. But they're kind and of siloed. They are very siloed. Um, most companies, I mean, most of these companies don't want to expose you that way because yeah. you'll get angry if you have a bad review and you'll tell all your friends, oh yeah. my God, Uber sucks because they'll never pick me up anymore, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Because you've got a one star review. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or maybe five one star yeah, yeah. reviews yeah. makes you not be picked up, you yeah. know? <laughs> um, okay, so we're, we'll finish up. Um, I guess just your prediction. So, like, I don't. Are you writing another book, or if you were thinking of one, what? Because this was I, ahead of its time. Michelle and I write books uh, for decade-long things, and this is going to be a decade-long thing. Yeah. I, it, it, we're in the early, early yeah, phases yeah. of this um, contextual system where your phone, your wearable computers, your even your shirt is going to be. Uh, watching you yeah. and telling you that you might have cancer, you might yeah. be having. I saw a sensor that's being developed that can tell you you're going to have a heart attack tomorrow. Right. 
that's pretty important to know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So imagine you have a thing on your wrist and it yeah. says, hey, uh, it's, it's time, it's to, time go to, to go to the doctor yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, go get your heart checked well, out. Hopefully the eye watch will have some of that. Well, it'll give you a little step, but yeah. I assume there's three or four eye watches in development, yeah. and we're the first one is going to just be about getting a watch out there with a few sensors and yeah. a nice display, and a, it has to look better than this one does. Yeah. This yeah. is a Rentastics, which is actually a pretty good one. Um, yeah, we're all waiting for Apple. I think the next year for Apple is going to be a big year. Yeah. I, um, You're it, back on iPhone? Or yeah, because the best apps are on iPhone. Yeah. I, I keep going to Android, but then three, four months later, because like the best app. apps are on yeah. my phone, and that's what I use a phone for now. I don't call people on no, this. No, true. It's I mean, true. my phone number is on the public internet. Anybody can call this. Has yeah. anybody called them since no, we started this no. interview? No, <laughs> but they're all on. Well, there was one person who called you, and you could tell you were getting annoyed. Like, <laughs> if my phone rings. It's just, it's just annoying. Yeah. Uh, well, look, it's brilliant. The book is uh, Age of Context. You can get it on Amazon. Yeah. Um, and thanks very much for having us. It's been a, a real pleasure. Thank you very much.